this real life? Yeah, this is real life. Marines were asked whether or not they would fire upon U.S. citizens who refuse or resist the confiscation of firearms banned by the U.S. government. And I found this very difficult to swallow. 11% opted with the no opinion response. Had no opinion firing on their own fellow Americans? Of the remaining 26.34% answered that they would fire on their fellow Americans, U.S. citizens, who refused or resisted the confiscation of firearms banned by the U.S. government, who had no authority constitutionally to enact such a ban. My name is Sergeant Charles Dyer. Uh, I'm an oath keeper. I'm with 1st Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalion out of uh, Camp Pendleton, California. I absolutely could not, I, I can't imagine that we're living in the times where I have to worry about having to confiscate the weapons from the American people. Is that freedom? It's absolutely not freedom. Uh, that I have to worry that we're going to quarantine a, a, a city for uh, the purposes of, of, of keeping them in their hostage, like Katrina? Absolutely not. That's not freedom in any way that you can think of it. That I'm almost speechless whenever I try to talk about this because I, I can't imagine that we're living in this kind of time. It, it really bothers me. Absolutely. Because of the quotation uh, March 11th, 1993 by President Clinton, because of the Clinton assault weapons ban that was being enacted, I formed a scenario that I knew would be explosive, shouldn't have been, but because of the times and the machinations of certain forces to disarm the American people. I don't care whether it's your governor or your senator or your representative or your or president. I'm sure you can look at instances days with him having sworn his oath. The person violates it blatantly. That's a dangerous thing. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. None of this stuff would be happening if it had stuck with the Constitution and stuck within its parameters. And we learned the American dream, and we were out there doing that American dream and working, and we were electing representatives that we felt were going to represent us while we were doing other things and maintaining our families and, and raising our families and doing the right thing as we thought. And I think we've just, we were duped in some cases where they've actually let us down. I saw a, a tremendous pattern of, a, of the growth of the infrastructure of a totalitarian state in the last eight years post 9-11. I mean, it's been going on for decades. We've, we've seen for decades encroachments on our liberties. And then a crisis would come along, and then all of a sudden they had a chance to, to uh, get their policies passed they've been wanting to pass for a long time. That's what I saw as just incredibly alarming. And it's just the concept of enemy combatant status itself is an extension of that. And when I was writing at Yale, I wrote a paper on enemy combatant status. It won their award for best paper on the Bill of Rights. And unfortunately, when Obama was elected, he didn't repeal any of those things. And he has, uh, he's left that in place, which is the pattern of all presidents. Whether it's a left boot or a right boot on the back of your neck, we just don't want the boot on the back of our neck. He stands on that office on the condition of that oath, and the safety valve that he takes is refusing to violate it. When you swore an oath to defend the Constitution, you took upon yourself an individual obligation to make your own decision on the spot of where that line is and whether an order is lawful or unlawful. You have an obligation to do so, and as the Nazis found out at Nuremberg, just following orders is no excuse. 95% of the church, Christian church, supported Hitler, which is terrifying to me. And uh, so I think we need to really wake up and not assume that um, uh, um, our fellow citizens are, won't hurt us. I would say to any pastor or anyone in the military, should we have a breakdown in things in this country, stay by your Bible, 
and stay by the Constitution. Do those things. And remember that in the history of this world, the terrible debacle, from my perspective anyway, of what happened in Nazi Germany, when the church did not stand by those innocent people, the Jewish people who were exterminated, uh, for no other reason than being Jewish. My God, how did we ever allow our government to reach such a point. What's happening to the United States is very, very sad. It's sad because we've seen it done to third world nations over and over and over again. I would like to ask that, that all of you just take a moment, take a deep breath, and realize the so solemn nature of this occasion because those of you who so, who so choose will be swearing an oath. Pretty serious proposition. You'll never have anything in your life that's as valuable as your word. So just remember that. If we all do nothing more than fulfill our oath, then we can turn things around just on that alone. Because it only takes a few relatively faithful servants to disfuse a lot of mischief in times of crisis. They merely hold to their oath. If you can't swear that oath, please, uh, please mentally excuse yourself and don't participate because I, for one, intend to honor this oath because we're in perilous times. Not quite so perilous, but perhaps far more perilous than in, in 1775. Please raise your hand thusly, and when you hear me say I, pronounce your own name. I, Larry Bailey, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, pledging my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor. So help me God. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to our great fraternity. Oath Keepers and Association of Active Duty Military, Police Officers, and Veterans, all of us who swore the oath and will keep our oath, will honor our oath. If you swore an oath to defend the Constitution, honor your oath by joining us, the Oath Keepers, and become an Oath Keeper.